Hello folks, I hope you can see me. I um, was headed into town to get new frames for my daily use uh, eyeglasses and um, I passed by this crepe myrtle and it began calling my name. Mad scientist, mad scientist, I dare you dig me up, create a bonsai out of me. Well, it taunted me. It provoked me. And so here we have it. I'm going to show you how um, I deal with a large trunk. Uh, well, this is actually a medium trunk, but the large amount of roots and such. And um, I'm going to flat cut it with the chainsaw. Just a quick demo because it's quick and easy. It's nothing to it. But anyway, you can see the heavy root system here. Lots of heavy stuff down here. Lots of fine feeder roots up near the top. This heavy root right here is my main surface root. So we're going to work with, between that and between what I have up here. But mainly I'm going to flat cut this heavy um, buttress of a root and possibly the bottom of this main root right here. Well, this will come off and this will um, stay but it's a twin trunk kind of twisted and um, I'll deal with this later on but at this moment what I want to deal with is the roots for you so I've got this this and this just a flat tray, a uh, beverage carrying tray. Uh, that's a, like a 15 gallon um, pot cut down. 55 gallon drum, the lid for it. And um, that would fit in there okay. Once I cut the roots, that would fit in there okay. But I want to leave extra room for it to grow. This will fit okay especially once I cut the roots back and I flat cut it but still being in this uh, rectangle container it limits the possibility of roots uh, later on so my best bet is this okay so we'll move these out of the way and that's just a 55 gallon drum that I whacked the top off. Okay, now just to semi plug up the drain holes. surface root I was telling you about that I was considering straight through it so that's looking pretty good right there so right now if you had a pot two three four inches 
it would be larger, you know, uh, basically, well, let me, let me put it this way. If this had been grown on and refined where all of the feeder roots are there and you wanted to put it into a, uh, you know, medium to good size uh, bonsai pot, two inches deep, three inches, four inches deep, this would work, okay? Because I flat cut th those roots and I've got feeder roots up here. If this tree was um, without any of this root right here and I flat cut it like that, it would still survive. This crepe myrtle is hardy, it's resilient, uh, it is prolific in its growth. So no matter what I do at this point, it's good to go. I just cut back a little of the heavier root. Just taking out some of the weeds. So, now, like I said, I can deal with this top at any time from this point on. As a matter of fact, The upper level roots, I can take those off right now. This is potentially the back side. It is elevated compared to that side, and that's okay. Uh, it's not uh, typically talked about uh, movement in the, in the root system, but it, it shows a different level, and um, it for me, it helps in the feature once the tree is planted in this bonsai container. So, Um, since I'm here, this is too big to show the example. This was just potted up today, um, and it's pretty tight in there. Right now, in this container, rather than pushing down on the roots themselves, you push around the edge of the container and you get it in there nice and tight. Now you got to be careful if you've got, you know, just regular commercial growing pots, something like that. But this works especially on your small to medium um, bonsai containers. Don't push down around the trunk when you're securing your plant in the pot. Push around the edges of your pot and if you got weak fingers, use some sort of tool. This is a stick, but it's a tool. And you press down around the edge of the pot, and that will secure your plant. See, that can almost support that plant right there without coming out of the pot. So, I'm just getting the soil in between the roots. I'm using my finger as if I use chopsticks, okay? There's no need to try to secure this like I just showed you in that uh, other pot. But now, if I wanted to, I could take that trunk or that uh, root piece, plant it in the ground, and shoots eventually will come up out of the side. What good is that? Uh, for a group planning or a raft a configuration. 
I've got some trees around here already that I've done this with. Well, I've got lots of trees now. So, there you have it. Plant it in the pot. And I'll decide how I'm going to treat the top here. I'll wait for a regrowth. And um, boom, Bob's your uncle. Well, that's a quick demo on flat cutting your crepe myrtle. Now, here's the thing that you could um, consider. With the crepe myrtle, you can do this not in the frozen tundra of the north, okay? Um, but if you just have a normal cold where um, your ground really does not freeze, you know, for the entirety of your winter, you can do this. But once the tree is locked into the ground for the winter and it's all frozen in, uh, you're just done. But I'm in northwest Florida. It gets cold here. It freezes here. But pretty much all year round, I can dig and cut the crepe myrtle. No matter what state it's in. Well, this is Florida, but that's not the state I'm talking about. Yeah, I know. Smart Alec. But it could be dormant. It could be at the first uh, flush of growth. It could be in full flower. And if you wanted to dig this crepe myrtle up, not a problem. Okay, it's just that resilient. Now, how you treat it also makes a difference. Um, if it's in full leaf and full flower, uh, I'd suggest you really treat it as if it were a rooted or um, an unrooted cutting which means you gotta keep your humidity up, you gotta keep the moisture up, uh, no fertilizer, and um, you should be good. Even if tending the uh, plant to keep the humidity up, if, you know, if that's what you gotta do, do that. But like right now, we're about 79 to 80 degrees uh, in the last week of April 2020, and um, there's no issues with this. This is not going to be a problem. Um, it's leafed out. The top of this tree was probably 15, 16 feet at least. And um, there you have it. Now this is a tree I actually planted for the purpose of digging up later on. And um, so the roots, you saw all of those feeder roots, they were there because it was probably 10, 15 years ago that I planted this. So there you have it. And I'll show you the top of that. Okay. That is the two trunks that um, came off of this tree. And I dug it up from right here, right next to a couple other crepe myrtle trees. Now the sun's going to get us here, but I'm going to show you this crepe myrtle right here, which is in a 55 gallon drum. I cut it back and so far I only have that one shoot deploying from the main trunk, but that's okay. I'll take what I got and I'll use it. Um, it's tender right now. It's been out probably a week and a half, two weeks. So now is about the time that I'm going to wire it loosely just to get uh, the direction that I want. And unfortunately, it's coming directly out horizontal from the trunk, which makes it a little more problematic in getting the design out of it that I want. But even if I use that, let it grow out, cut it back, get a back bud on it, and take that more in a vertical direction, I can work that also. But the top off a 55 gallon drum, boom, Bob's my uncle. And um, here's again, I've shown this in another video, but all of these are crepe myrtle stumps. Most of them are from rooted cuttings, you know, two inches, three inches, four inches, five, six inches, doesn't matter. Um, just as long as you 
treat it right. So anyway, flat cutting a crepe myrtle that's in leaf. Not impossible for it to survive. Boom, Bob's uncle. All right, see you later.